What's up, guys? The ABK deal is starting to ramp up with the whole battle in the U.S. Supreme Courts between the FTC and Microsoft with Activision. And the FTC has finally started delivering some arguments to the judge. And it appears that they are wanting to really hold fast to their opinions. I mean, really stick to their guns. They are going for broke and they are claiming that they have powerful evidence to prove that Microsoft is up to no good by buying Activision. Now, what exactly is this powerful evidence? The ace up the sleeve, the edge over Microsoft and their law team and all the arguments that Microsoft has been making all along. That evidence is ZeniMax Bethesda. Apparently, some of the decisions that have been made by Microsoft since the purchase of ZeniMax Bethesda has raised grave concerns over what Microsoft might potentially do with Activision. The FTC argues that Microsoft's willingness to make games Xbox exclusive, such as Redfall and Starfield, support their case against the acquisition. Microsoft's cancellation of a PlayStation 5 version of Redfall raises grave concerns about potential exclusivity of Activision Blizzard games on Xbox platforms, and it represents a precedent set by the Bethesda acquisition despite its persistent attempts to secure a 10-year commitment deal for Call of Duty on other platforms. The FTC is still hell-bent on this idea that Microsoft is going to make certain games exclusive to the Xbox ecosystem that other companies need for their survival, even though, and let's really reiterate that, even though Jim Ryan himself has come out and said that he was not worried at all about Call of Duty becoming exclusive because the PlayStation brand is far too big for that title to even exist without it. And let's just face it, yes, that's a lot of money to be left on the table. And yes, Microsoft would have to answer to a lot of shareholders on why they decided to make the Call of Duty franchise exclusive to the Xbox ecosystem, basically shit canning a ton of revenue that could be made and filter back to those shareholders. So let's honestly logically think about that. There's no way in a cold days in hell that Call of Duty would become exclusive to the Xbox platform in any amount of time. Now, of course, the FTC wants to refer back to their amazing expert witness, their financial expert that somehow did some extraordinary way of twisting the math and creating what is called the high performance console market even though this same expert created a, a paper, a draft, an article, whatever you want to call it, while back when they decided to talk about the console market and how exclusives matter, they help create growth in the console ecosystem. And during that whole article, statement, whatever they made back then, they included Nintendo. But now fast forward to 2023 and that same expert is totally denouncing that Nintendo is part of the high-end console market because they're still stuck in Gen 8 while PlayStation and Xbox are in Gen 9. The FTC has decided to completely throw a little bit of logic out the window and they have now decided to play both sides of the fence by telling the judge that even if they include Nintendo in their equations to the high console market, Citing their expert, the FTC asserts that the proposed acquisition may subsequently lessen competition in high-performance consoles and consoles overall, including the Nintendo Switch. So with this so-called powerful evidence that the FTC has, they are trying to convince the federal judge that if Microsoft was to buy Activision and they were to make those games exclusive, Microsoft could fundamentally negatively affect the console gaming market entirely and even the cloud gaming market. They're still trying to go down the road of convincing the judge that the cloud gaming market is its own entity. And they've even brought in members from Nvidia to try to somehow prove how viable the cloud gaming market really is. And this is where it's getting really interesting because the FTC is wanting the federal judge to ignore any 10 year commitments, promises, whatever Microsoft has been saying, 
the judge has to ignore those statements from Microsoft because there's no way to believe Microsoft would keep their word because the actions speak louder than words, especially with the fact that the FTC is still trying to pull the charade that somehow Microsoft lied to EU regulators when they bought ZeniMax Bethesda. But yet again, another flaw to their powerful evidence has already come out, and that is with the EU a few months back when the FTC tried to say that Microsoft lied to them. The EU came out and stated that they have cleared the Microsoft ZeniMax transaction unconditionally, and they believe that restricting access to ZeniMax titles would not significantly impact competition. The EU even added on to that whole statement in wanting to, wanting to clear the air that Xbox was pretty transparent about their, their intentions with the whole Bethesda buyout and what exactly Microsoft was going to do with their library of games. And let's really think about that logically. There has been a number of games that have been kept multi-platform, like the Fallout game series, uh, the Elder Scrolls Online game series. There is a number of games that have remained multi-plat, and they have continued also supporting those games, especially like Elder Scrolls Online. Necrom just came out for both platforms, Xbox and PlayStation and the PC. And so Microsoft has done a very good job of keeping commitments when it comes to Bethesda ZeniMax titles. And another big commitment that they made was keeping the contractically agreed exclusive that PlayStation decided a money hat with Deathloop and Ghostwire Tokyo. Microsoft decided to honor those contracts and give PlayStation those exclusive games for the time that they bought them for. And let's just say, like, if you really want to break it down right now, think about it. Let's get some logic into this. It has taken over two years since Microsoft purchased ZeniMax Bethesda for them to get one exclusive game out of Bethesda, and that was Redfall. And that went off like a lead balloon. I had no problem with the game. A lot of people enjoyed the game, but a large majority of people lost their damn mind about that game and they really feel that it was like a miss for an exclusive game for Xbox. And now we have Starfield coming up, which is supposed to be a big home run for the Xbox ecosystem. And literally, let's really, like I said, think about that. It has taken two years, over two years, to get a game exclusive to the Xbox ecosystem that is going to be a bombshell out of Bethesda. Now, since we're in the conversation of ZeniMax Bethesda being used as some point for the FTC to compare to Call of Duty, it's interesting and ironic that yet again, Jim Ryan, PlayStation's Jim Ryan, has made a comment back in the past that completely contradicts the FTC's argument and it comes down to what Sony PlayStation filed to world regulators. And in one statement, they claim, while Microsoft has made large gaming acquisitions before, acquired games at these studios drove only a fraction of PlayStation engagement compared to Activision Blizzard's portfolio or Call of Duty alone. In 2021, Microsoft acquired ZeniMax Media, parent company of developer Bethesda, for $7.5 billion. Bethesda develops the popular Fallout and Elder Scrolls franchises. Even so, Bethesda cannot match Call of Duty's unique ability to inspire high levels of engagement with its titles. So right there, Sony came out and said that place, excuse me, Bethesda does not hold a flame to what Call of Duty can do. So why are we using Bethesda titles as some comparison on what Microsoft could do with Call of Duty? It makes absolutely no sense. The FTC did kind of close a little bit of their arguments out on this whole powerful evidence, wanting to clear it with the judge that no matter what, that Microsoft still has to get this deal over the CMA, the UK authority, and that they don't know why that there's this big rush when it comes to the whole proceedings here in the US Supreme Court, because even if things go well over here, Microsoft still has the hurdle over there. And that is where the FTC closed out with the statement wanting to just kind of like let everybody know that technically the July 18th deadline is not the expiration date for the deal. It just means that Microsoft and Activision need to go back to the renegotiating table and renegotiate the terms of their buyout until the FTC and the CMA are done having their fun. 
A lot more has come out from these proceedings. I have a whole list of videos that I want to put out for you guys, so please keep it tuned here on this channel if you want to stay up to date with all the charades and shenanigans that are coming out of this whole FTC versus Xbox court battle. And please like, subscribe, all that fun stuff down below. Leave a comment. Uh, please let me remind you to explore my end cards here, look at my latest video, explore my channel. And I always have to finish off with telling everybody that no matter what anybody says, to please always remember to play the games you love on the platform you prefer. I am Centurion1307, and thank you for watching.